guys, welcome back to the channel. You already know what it is, it's Ronton from Enchaholics and today we're back in the lab and as you can already tell from the thumbnail, we're going to be installing the angle kit on the 240SX. Um, we finally got all the bits and pieces together, had to wait for some parts to come in, but we finally got it all in, we got a lot to do, so let's get to it. Got you guys set up on the tripod. So in order for you to take everything off, uh, we went ahead and again took out the cotter pin. We loosened up the uh, castle nut. Um, don't take it all the way off because what you're going to do is you're going to bang on the knuckle so that you can break the taper so that tie rod can drop. And then you don't want it to drop down by only without having the lock nut. So the lock nut or the castle nut is going to stop it from falling down super fast. If you are doing this and you're retaining everything, you don't want to damage the uh, thread. So that's why it's always a good thing to leave the castle nut on there to protect the threads as you are hammering here because you don't want to miss and then cross thread or strip the uh, threadings on the tie rod end. If your tie rod end is busted like mine, it really doesn't matter, but it's just good practice to do what I just said. Um, just because it's in, you know, in the future when you are trying to save parts because they're not broken and you don't have to replace them, then you want to protect the parts that you have. So that's just one thing that you have to do. So we're going to go ahead and uh, just continue on and let's get it. So if you're doing it in steps and you want to make it easy for yourself, uh, first of all, go ahead and remove uh, the tie rod. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to not take off the bolts that hold the knuckle to the coilover. The reason why um, is because you need to break the uh, taper on the ball joint right here. You need to break the taper in order for you to actually remove the knuckle or separate the knuckle from the lower control arm. And it's a lot harder to do it. Um, with the knuckle moving around so you want to basically still have the knuckle secured so we're going to basically use the coilover as a secure point to keep the knuckle from moving and in order to do this uh, again uh, you're going to do the same thing you're going to take off the cotter pin and then you're going to go ahead and back out the castle nut flush to the um, to the bolt and then uh, we're going to get to work there's a lot of ways to do it um, I have a ball joint separator that looks like a like a wedge but it uses a screw uh, in order to increase the wedge to pop the ball joint out. You have a Pittman arm puller, you have a pickle fork. Um, any of those uh, can be used to separate the knuckle from the low control arm. Um, but the pickle fork I think will damage the rubber boot that's on the ball joint so I don't recommend using that if you are planning on saving some parts. But again I'm replacing everything so you can use that. Uh, in that instance, you don't mind messing up parts that are already broken. Um, but if you are saving parts, I recommend getting um, a ball joint separator. Um, pretty much that looks like this style. Or you can get a pitman arm puller because it's mounted on the top. But with a pitman arm puller, you don't have to have the shock or the coilover hooked up to the knuckle because you want to have the space for the pitman arm puller because it goes from the top. But for me, I need, uh, I'm using this style, so I will use, uh, I will have the knuckle still connected to the coilover. So again, it just comes out the box. Again, I got this from Harbor Freight. Um, basically, you thread in, um, you thread in the bolts, like so, okay? And then what it is, is it's gonna lever as you um, rotate. It's gonna lever and push the uh, ball joint down. That's what's gonna pop it out and break the taper. So uh, we're gonna have it left to max. Um, if you can't have the clearance, there's always an adjuster here. You can actually put it um, in a different spot. So we're gonna see, we're gonna set it up and then once I have everything set up, um, I'm gonna start uh, cranking down on the bolt so that we can get the uh, ball joint popped out the taper so that we can separate the knuckle from the lower control arm. So let me set that up real quick and then let me get back to you. All right, so the uh, castle nut that holds the knuckle to the ball joint um, is a 22. So now we're gonna have to figure out how to get a, a breaker bar in here because I gotta at least break the bolt. Um, and I still have this uh, coilover in the way. So I think I can get my breaker bar in here. Uh, let me go find the breaker bar. Alright. Oh yeah. Alright, so unfortunately that's not gonna work only because in the direction I'm going, 
the uh, knuckle will spin. So we're going to go ahead and try to max it out right here and break it from here. Alright, cool. Wow, that wasn't on there. Harm. That was pretty easy. So we did have to adjust the ball joint um, separator to the larger um, width only because it's just the spacing in between the knuckle and the ball joint is too big. So basically I got to pull out, uh, you just pull this out and then you uh, put it to the top hole. So now you have more reach. Um, it's going to act like a Pitman arm uh, fork or a pickle fork. Um, you're going to basically just try to line it up as flush as you can to the bottom of the knuckle. And then you have that little tooth thing right here. So basically you want to make sure it's all the way in just so that you don't have any um, malfunction while you're doing this. Um, and then uh, put this on top of the bolt. So uh, good to have the nut on there um, so that it's not just solely resting on the threads because you don't want that to damage. Again, if you're saving your parts. Um, but if you're not, then go to town. Um, so from there, now you want to get your bolt. You thread the bolt on the bottom and um, keep tension on the uh, top part of the uh, separator until you have it taut. Now, once it's taut, uh, you basically just start cranking on the uh, bolt until this thing breaks from the taper. Uh, so we will do that. So again, this is going to break violently um, because you are forcing the taper to break by using um, downward pressure um, based on your ball joint separator. So it will pop down. Um, again, since you have the nut on there, it's not going to pop down and swing to the bottom, so it should be fine. And again, it won't do that on mine regardless because I still have the arm connected to the tie rod, so we're safe in that aspect. Did you see that? That's what I'm saying. So you want to make sure that bolt is on there because that's exactly what's going to happen. It will pop, break the taper, and obviously if it wasn't for the nut holding it down, that thing would have swung down. Um, so that is what I'm trying to tell you guys. Make sure you keep that bolt on there. So, so that should be loose um, now that we broke it off. Um, so from there, uh, you can go ahead and just leave the castle nut. Um, now we're going to go ahead and start disassembling the uh, tension rod and the front lower control arm so that it's free. And then from there, uh, we can go ahead and move on to removing the knuckle. All we have now is just removing top bolt here and dropping everything down. It. that is the front wheel control arm it is now off uh, along with the uh, knuckle and everything so this is pretty cool I guess the person who owned the car before me went ahead and installed the uh, energy suspension poly bu uh, bushings so this is pretty cool um, I might not even use them anymore because I'm going with solid but that's a pretty good sign that whoever had it before me wanted to take care of this car um, but as you can see, this thing needs to be replaced because this is now bent. Um, the actual uh, sway bar end link is crooked. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's bad. Um, but let me see. If I can straighten it out. I mean, I don't really mess with these ones a lot. So I don't know. If I'm able to straighten it out, does it mean it's okay? Who knows? I don't know. So, I mean, it moves. It's still... Uh, it's still sounds like it got grease inside of it so maybe probably the person who did it did it wrong and I think what had happened was they had probably tightened down the suspension without having the vehicle 
support its own weight. I'm thinking that's what happened. Because that's kind of awkward that it would do that. So, but yeah, I mean, it, it still moves pretty good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I can still reuse them. I don't know. I gotta go ask around. It was at this moment that he I knew had to put everything back he on fucked up. There was no way I was gonna break this bolt off. Uh, so I pretty much used my breaker bar. Um, I went ahead and put my lug nuts back on just in case the thing were to you know fly off or something. I didn't want to damage the threads. So I went ahead and uh, used my breaker bar, and then I have a jack handle that I pretty much took off and attached it so I have more leverage and boom, broke off. So we're good to go. Now I got to take everything back off and then uh, slowly start putting everything back together. So that's a quick little update. Had to backtrack work. All right, we are back to the scheduled program. All right, so here it is. These are the uh, Street Faction 25 mil extended front lower control arms. I did box them. Uh, the naysayers will say, hey, you don't need to box them and blah, 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 blah. My car, my build. I did what I want. So I went ahead and boxed these. Um, uh, again, I don't know if they offer this service anymore um, because when they did box it, again, I mentioned it earlier in the video, it still says SFG on here, which used to stand for Street Faction Garage. They dropped the G and now carry the E for engineering. So again, this was done a long time ago. Again, I don't know if they offer this service anymore, but I got these. So these are some throwback uh, 25 mil extended. Um, New, new uh, ball joint and everything. Uh, new bushings from energy suspension. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this in, and then go from there. I do still need to regrease it because there is no grease. It didn't come packed, so I need to regrease it once everything is all done. All right. So basically, I'm just using the install grease that came with the energy suspension uh, bushings, the replacement bushings. So hopefully, this will aid in trying to slide this lower control arm in. So, I mean, that's the hope. I don't want to struggle with this, you know what I'm saying? Alright. Hopefully that works. Just a tip, if you guys are having trouble removing your inner tie rod from the rack um, just because it's so tight on there, uh, remember you have to, um, that little lock ring, you have to make sure that all the tabs are bent up so that um, it is not in the way of the inner tie rod from spinning. And then the next thing that you want to do is, uh, I went ahead and put a jack underneath the adjustable wrench. Um, only reason why is because I'm be using the jack to do all the work um, just because it is pretty much on there secured so pretty much all you gotta do is set up the jack the way how I have set it up underneath your adjustable wrench and then uh, all you gotta do is slowly jack the wrench up and um, keep an eye on the uh, steering rack make sure everything's okay and you should be good to go all right so we went ahead and already installed the new uh, inner tie rod right here as you can see uh, the next thing that we're gonna do is we need to center the rack um, since I have a quick release I'm pretty much gonna take the wheel off and the hub and the quick release and all that and then center the rack and then reinstall the uh, hub quick release and all that um, so that the steering wheel is centered because I've been having this issue where my steering wheel is actually crooked so I don't know uh, probably happened when <clears throat> excuse me when I uh, what is it? It probably happened when I uh, previously uh, was working on the car and I had changed out the steering uh, bushing that goes onto the steering shaft. Um, and I changed it out and I think I might have installed it crooked. So we're going to go ahead and recenter the rack and hopefully everything is good. So based on the FSM, um, the center of the rack, um, you'll have two different measurements. Uh, one for the driver's side and one for the passenger side. So I went ahead and did the bare minimum way, which was to turn the wheel lock to lock and count how many times uh, it takes from lock to lock, get that, and then divide it by two, obviously. And then rotate the wheel um, per the uh, 
divided by two value and that should be where I need to be at. So now I'm sort of where I need to be at. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fine tune it and make sure it matches the spec on the FSM. And then from there I know for sure that my steering rack should be centered. All right, so this is the driver's side. Um, you're going to be measuring not from the flush point, but from the actual uh, starting point within the rack. So see that little lip right here? You're measuring from the lip to the back end or the starting starting point of the tie rod. So from here to here should be 68.5 or yeah, 68.5 millimeters. So I did some hokey pokiness. You know, you got to make things work. So this is a zip tie that I measured or pretty much what I did was I got it as straight as I can and from end to end so something like that so basically again millimeters won't really make a difference but that is the straight measurement from the lip to the back end of the tie rod and that right there is a measurement of 68.5 millimeters so just to double check so this is it so so there you have it from end to end on the, on the uh, zip tie is 68.5 so theoretically if we go to the passenger side now um, we should have 68.5 millimeters all right so on the passenger side you can see the setup is different now so you're going to be measuring from the starting point which is this guy right here to the back end of or the starting point of the tie rod so this length right here should be 68.5 millimeters so since I already started on the driver's side we know for sure that's 68.5 millimeters so let me show you what it looks like now on the passenger side. So if I line up my little meter from and then like that, there you go, 68.5 millimeters. So we are centered guys. And just so I can show you that I'm not tripping, I'm gonna show you what my steering wheel looks like right now. All right, so now that we got the driver's side and the passenger side, of the steering rack measured out per the FSM of 68.5 millimeters. That is how my steering wheel sits. And as you can see, crooked. All right, so just before um, you do any type of modding of your inner rod, like if you have to cut it, again, I haven't, I haven't uh, uh, tried it just yet, but a key point is that um, when you are using these modular style um, outers, uh, whether SPLs or anything that has a shank like this one right here what you're gonna do is you have to make sure that the shank is fully seated within the taper of the knuckles so pretty much just have it secured and then what you want to do is you want to torque down the castle nut to what the FSM says 22 to 36 foot pounds so 22 to 36 foot pounds and then once it's torqued that means it's fully seated and you should be good to go and then from there go ahead and insert your uh, cotter pin um, supplied by whatever company uh, that you guys got the uh, outers from and then once it's secured you're good to go so with that being said we're going to go ahead and torque this down to 22 to 36 i'm probably going to pick a, a mid number probably like i would say 30 and then um, torque it down to 30 and then from there we're going to go ahead and make this as straight as possible the hub and everything so that let's see if this inner rod right here will slip on to the shank and if it does then i don't have to mod anything um but if it doesn't, then I'm going to have to start cutting some threads and then I'm going to show you exactly how to measure that out. Alright, so pretty much uh, I went ahead and took off the adjusting collar for the, uh, for the rod end so that we can see what's going on here. So basically, the inner rod is too long for the, uh, to install it the way how it is only because the threads will, in, uh, will butt up against the adjusting threads on the outer so with that being said if you were to make this and collapse it as far as you can and lock everything down the hole is going to be misaligned so that you cannot um, install it correctly onto the knuckle so we're gonna go ahead and just cut off some threads here all right so we went ahead and cut it um, so we just go ahead and take off the tape oops sorry so we're, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take off the tape and then just back out the uh, the uh, lock nut here and as that lock nut uh, backs out to so clean up the cut and we're going to be good to go so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then install it back onto the rack and then measure everything out hopefully with how everything sits if I were to take the outer rod and go ahead and connect everything 
I should be able to have this installed in the rack and be able to just uh, swoop in the outer onto the shank without having to move the, uh, the knuckle. So let's go ahead and try that and hopefully the measurements work and go from there. guys we're just gonna do a little demo of uh, once you get everything back together again uh, everything is torqued down minus the uh, outer uh, tie rod because I still got to slip on the boot and secure the boot um, but yeah so I'm just gonna show you what it looks like when it's all finished so that is full lock to the right full lock to the left so the main thing you want to make sure is that you have the again the inner outer tie rod combo parallel to your front load control arm so that when you do uh, turn the wheel at full lock whether it is um, left or right um, you do not have any bump steer so basically meaning the outer tie rod knocks into your front load control arm so um, it's very minimal space when it is at full lock, so I'm, pretty, I'm fully confident that it's not going to have any issues. Um, but yeah, so uh, all we got to do now is, uh, again, uh, torque this down, um, put the uh, cotter pins in, and then slip on the boot on both sides. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like it. Um, it's, a good, it's a good little install. I like doing this. This is pretty chill. I thought it was kind of daunting at first because I got, you know, it's the first time tackling this, but... It's very straightforward. Um, the hardest part, I would say, is getting your rack centered. Um, there's just a lot of information online. Um, you know, again, rotating your wheel at full lock, left to right, counting the, ro the revolutions and dividing it, and then also going by the FSM by measuring. There's just a lot of ways to do it. You just want to make sure that there's equal travel from left to right on the rack, and then once that is right, then go ahead and recenter your steering wheel. If you do have a OEM steering wheel, you're gonna have to recenter it by removing the u-joint um, but if you have a hub um, aftermarket style steering wheel just make sure that you're uh, centered on the rack wheels are straight and then you can go ahead and remove your hub and then reinstall the hub all right guys that is a wrap we finally got everything done with the front suspension we put the ankle kit on we put everything on that i showed you guys how to do it hopefully this can be a resource for you guys who are planning on modding your suspension um, but yeah, so it was a really fun install. It's just a lot of things to do, a lot of small bits and pieces here and there uh, when it comes to modding your suspension, but it can be done and just enjoy it. I um, hope you guys like the content. I'm still pushing out more content on the 240 because there's always something I'm working on. There's always something broken. That's just the way the 240 is. But um, we still got to do the rear end before we get a full alignment. So uh, the next probably couple episodes that I'll be doing is rear suspension. I'm going to be dropping the subframe and doing all uh, the checks like I did with the front uh, making sure anything that is broken I'll replace it and um, just go through the whole nine so that we can finally get the car line and it can finally start driving it you already know what time it is for all my day ones out there hype is for the moment and style is forever deuces